Good afternoon, folks. As space weather conditions are intensifying today, we're already seeing transformer trouble, mobile communications outages, and both Facebook and Instagram going down worldwide. We'll cover all of that in the morning, but I realized as I analyzed the storm conditions throughout this morning that you might want to see how it all works. By the way, this episode of Deeper Look is being made public, so thank our website members. So this morning, before the sun came up in the United States, I was watching magnetic ground perturbations beginning as the coronal hole stream had arrived hours earlier. The first wave was felt in the lithosphere in the 4 and 5 o'clock hours UTC. The time stamp top right. Please notice how the geoelectric fields respond immediately and have a reverberation and recovery period that lasts into the 6 o'clock hour. By 7, it is gone, but the ground perturbations are already beginning again, and before you know it, North America is lit up through the 8 o'clock hour, and this time there was a much faster recovery in the geoelectric fields after the large-scale disruption waned. By this time, we still hadn't hit the official geomagnetic storm level. That is why it is important to watch the solar wind for indicators prior to the large-scale storm event. The speed bump said the coronal hole stream was here. By the time we are officially in the geomagnetic storm, we do not actually see much change in the ground effects, but alas, that's because the disruption and effects to come follow the storms in many cases. That's not to say we don't get the same kind of effects in the field potential. But then the storm ended and we entered a period of instability that brought about equally strong readings, if not stronger than before. This is the sequence of waiting where the solar storm energy keeps building up over the entire disturbance. And did you catch that at the end? Here we are seeing a stabilizing situation, shocked to life at a confusing magnetic latitude that you wouldn't expect from polar geomagnetic storms. Well, we've just taken another shock wave a speed increase, not unexpected given the asymmetry and odd shape of the coronal hole itself, but this time the speed is much higher and we're seeing the magnetospheric compression effects coupled with the reverberating storm energy from overnight. I'd expect the geomagnetic storms to ramp back up on the magnetometers, which dropped off for the storm earlier and came back up in the interim, will fall again now along with the electron flux due to hit the floor again. I will see you all in the morning for a full storm report. You can check in anytime at spaceweathernews.com. Be safe, everyone.